Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the TV Falls. Last night's good morning. My name is Gordon. Hello, baby. Hello. All right. Uh, that was perfect timing. Bibby just went to get a drink, and literally, as his butt touched the seat, <laughs> he kind of finished like pow. Uh, but anyway, good morning, everyone. Welcome into Twitch.tv forward slash Ice Cream Plus. My name is Graham Day, and I'm joined by the man. Some say he is Hyde's own Tiger Woods. <laughs> is that his name? Tiger Woods. It's Tiger Woods. Uh, we call what do you him. mean? Is that his name? You uh, fucking heathen! It's, I, I can't remember. I was I was too busy trying to concentrate on hyping you up, and you called me a fucking heathen. <laughs> Some say he's high tone wheelstone reader. <laughs> you got shit. That, that is also accurate. That is also accurate. <laughs> we know him because we've got Bibin Ho. We've got the Binya. Come on, babe. That is me. Hello. I'll read. I'll read. How's how's Bib this morning? <clears throat> yeah, I feel rude. Well, is it? I didn't set me alarm last night, so I actually only got up at half past nine. <laughs> um, so it was a bit of a rush this morning to get all the news done and, uh, well, find the news, write it out, and do whatever we need to do, uh, need to do. So yeah, <coughs> feeling a feeling a bit rush this morning. Uh, or actually, only down to my own fault for not setting an alarm. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling good, man. What about you? Uh, I'm still a broken individual from trying to keep in shape. <laughs> It's fucking hurts. No, this morning, yeah. this morning woke up. Yesterday I was feeling a bit dodgy. So we were supposed to stream Mafia last night around six ish, uh, and about half five I had to like move it back two hours on the schedule because I was just laid on the couch and fallen asleep. I said to Babe, I was, uh, it was like, what are you doing after stream? I was like, I'm just going to lie down on the couch and fall asleep and and feel sorry for myself. And that's pretty much what I did for the rest of the day. <laughs> laid on the couch, had a bit of a nap, uh, woke up, and I was like, oh, there's no way I can stream. Uh, so we pushed it back just to see whether. I feel better later on. Anyway, I felt a little bit better later on. Woke up this morning, just felt kind of dodgy again. Thought there's no way I could do that exercise. And then I just heard Danielle starting to exercise downstairs. I was like, ugh. So I got up and went downstairs and joined the exercise. And I felt all right whilst I was doing it. I definitely feel better for getting up and doing the exercise in terms of myself. But like back to that point again where I'm just like, ah, I can't lift my arms. <laughs> just, yeah. just simple stuff like taking Chloe to school in the schoolroom this morning. I saw Danielle's cup of tea on the side, and she'd gone up here to start working in this room. And I thought, I'll take her a cup of tea, she's left downstairs. And it's just like when you're, you're two steps up the stairs, and you think, oh, okay, I'm just going to give up and just live here now for the rest of the day, because I can't be bothered going up the rest of the steps, and I don't want to walk back down either, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, other than that, I'll read. Uh, good morning, Mr. T. Uh, good morning, NXPVP. Uh, I did see your message, Jordan, as well, saying... Um, was it basically, is there any uh, ice cream uploads today? Uh, yes, we're just a bit, bit late with school running and, and stuff. But yes, yeah, it's, it's good. But we are here, as you can see. Uh, what, what does that emote say, babe? It says, hello. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Uh, let me jump into the split screen. Um, yes, there we go. Okay, we have quite a few news articles today, so we won't linger for too much. We'll jump straight into the thing. But before we do, I'll just let you guys know that my name is Graham. This is Babe, and together we are Ice Cream. We bring you your daily dose of news from the world, video games, and beyond. In this, this show is called The Scoop, and that is the UK's number one video games podcast, as said by us. Um, but anyway, we give you our thoughts and impressions on those biggest, best, and breaking stories from the world of video games, and we want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions in return. And it's it's important that you do that because we want to turn this into a, a conversation, a little bit of backwards and forwards. And we can do that live here right now on Twitter twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads but we also turn this into a video podcast that goes out on youtube a little bit later on today and an audio podcast that goes out on itunes spotify and soundcloud and google play but everyone that listens on demand they get the ability to pause fast forward and, and do all the on demandy things but they don't get the opportunity to speak right here to bib they don't get to speak right to him uh, so if you want to if you want to speak to Bib on behalf of everyone else, feel free to do that. Use your opportunity to chat. It's good. We want to, we want to speak. We want to speak to you. Um, so anyway, without further ado, let's jump in. Uh, something that we we love to hate because we want to love it, and we don't, so we love to hate it. Uh, I'm sure you can guess what it is just from that. And if you can't, if you've been around for the scoop long enough, you absolutely will. And if you can't, we'll tell you anyway. It is Google Stadia. Da, 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 da. Wrong. I need need kind of like a like a. A trombone that kind of drops off at the end, like. Got a better idea. What's that? The sound of you blowing up a balloon and then just letting it go. <laughs> <laughs> it goes. <laughs> it whizzes around the room. Yeah, that's pretty much how we feel about Google Stadia. Um, reason being that we invested in the fans' edition and we still haven't really ha had anything to show for it since. But 
Maybe, maybe things might be starting to change. Anyway, we'll jump into this article written by Tom Ivan for VGC. The article says Google has cut the Stadia price to $100 or £90. So the cost of the Premiere Edition has been reduced. New Stadia Connect stream also reduced. Scrolling down, Google has introduced a significant Stadia price cut just seven months after the platform's November 2019 launch. It's now offering the Stadia Premiere Edition which lets you play games on your TV using a Google Chromecast Ultra and a Stadia controller for $99, £89 or €99. Euros. Down from its $129, £119 and £129 launch price. So it's basically $30, £30, €30 Euro reduction. Anyway, Stadia Premier Edition is now $99.99, reads Stadia's website, instead of including a, core, a code for... A, Instead of including a code for Stadia Pro in Premier Edition, new users can get Stadia Pro for free by signing up at Stadia.com. Prior to the price cut, Stadia Premier Edition came with a three-month Stadia Pro trial subscription. Normally, uh, normally priced at £8.99 per month, Stadia Pro offers 4K HDR streaming with 5.1 surround sound and free games each month. Since June the 3rd, Google has been offering Stadia Pro uh, free for one month for new users. June's free Stadia Pro games are The Elder Scrolls Online, Super Hot, Little Nightmares, Panzer Dragoon Remake, Get Packed, and Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. Power Rangers? <gasps> okay, a free version of Stadia, previously known as Stadia Base, launched in April, offering up to 1080p streaming with stereo sound. Google also announced on Wednesday that it will provide a look at upcoming Stadia games in its next Connect stream on July the 14th. The company apologised earlier this month after it made an early build of Ubisoft's unreleased adventure game Gods and Monsters available to play on Stadia. Uh, pretty short and sweet. Straight yeah. to the point, though. Thoughts, Bib? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, is 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 knocking thirty quid off the top price a good idea? Probably, yeah, because I think they've probably reached match capacity of people wanting to invest into Google Stadia. Will thirty pounds make a difference? Yes, I think it will. I think it will give people the opportunity uh, if they was willing to give it a chance. But then seeing. The world say that it, it wasn't up to scratch. It's fallen down in certain places. Thirty pound off anything is a lot, um, especially for someone like me. So yeah, I think it, it, this could potentially bring people in for a second wind. Um, but is whether or not I, I'm sure it's in a better position now. I mean, we the ones that we have are in the office, so I haven't been able to test it for the last three months or however long it's been since we've been out of the office. Twelve years. I've heard. Yeah, I've, I've I've been speaking to Mr. Bamber about it, and he said that his lad has been using it day in day out to play Destiny. Um, so the, it it clearly is usable uh, in certain places. It probably would be usable at my house with my internet as well, which is also something that you will need if you haven't got strong internet. Then that's another barrier of entry for you. But having thirty pounds shaved off the top of the price is it is good it's a it's the right move for them i think i think it may be like i said before give them a second wind and people may want to invest it's now one under 100 pounds and even though even though in your brain you know you've, you you're saving 30 pounds but as soon as you see it tick underneath 100 pounds i'm sure you're thinking actually that's a better price than it was when it was 120 pounds. <clears throat> well it's ticked under 90 pounds isn't it as well which is another obviously um it's, it's neither in or there. It's a penny under ninety pounds, but it's one of those marketing things. Eighty nine, ninety nine, mm. under ninety pounds. It's, it's like the value proposition does slightly change a little bit. My my issue, as as always though, is if they've missed an absolute trick because obviously Stadia, uh, not Stadia Switch has been hugely successful this last 12, 24 months because we're at the end of a product cycle. Yes, we do have. Um, a regular stream of games or a semi-regular stream of games from first parties so uh, uh we've had like the likes of death strandings the final fantasies which final fantasy was that was that cross platform was that just playstation exclusive for a while can't remember uh, it's playstation exclusive i think for a year um okay well, to, to like next april i think it is well okay well playstation users have had a stream of of games to play uh, but like Switch has managed to capitalise in that time to be the alternative. And I know Stadia is not trying to be the alternative, it's trying to be the same thing. Um, but they had an opportunity there when, when things are starting to slow down, when people have a little bit of disposable income because there isn't as many games flying out, things are being delayed to, to move to the next gen or at least that crossover window. Um, if Stadia just had a second wave, like they, they didn't even have a first wave, so 
what what am I talking about? But but like if they'd have launched with Stadia's out now and play all of these games as opposed to what was it like twelve games or something it launched mm. with, which went to twenty games and then there was kind of nothing for three months ish and and then a couple more things have started to appear and if they'd have launched with. 20-ish games and then a month or two later these are definitely coming and then three months in the other one starts to come but they keep the conversation flowing and so on at this point they could have been like if, they, if they'd have had a proper plan for a, a wave one and two and did, didn't just rush it out as some all singing all dancing finished product mm. um then stadia could have been so so much better at this point i mean dropping the price will help but I'm not sure if it will help that much because it's still it's still eighty nine ninety nine. It's still ninety quid, uh, almost a hundred pounds that you've got to spend on a service that that for most people will always be shit. Uh, yeah. If, because like say first impressions, oh it's that thing that's not very good. They have to change opinions. I mean it's taken Microsoft the best part of seven years to change themselves from this horrible TV focused uh, anti consumer uh, digital rights managed nasty thing to oh, actually their, their their messaging is amazing from a customer perspective so google i mean seven months in is they're not going to be able to change the the the, the uh rep, not what what's the word reputation uh, in yeah. that amount of time but they've got a lot of work to do to cut out uh, cut out for them to do that dropping the price is a good start make it accessible that's one barrier for entry mm -hmm. but the, the other main barrier now is changing people's opinions and the only way you can do that is to give people experience with it to give people mm -hmm exclusive experiences and so on so they they have a long long way to go it is a big big move but i'm not sure it's enough the people that are in it like you say tom uh mark's little and he's probably loving it playing destiny uh he's found out his niche uh to to play it to get use of it that way and he already has it to hand um but other people that don't have it to hand that don't necessarily have a niche specifically for it are going to be like well what am, I, what am I getting for? There's nothing exclusive. Yeah. And there's nothing I can't do. So, yeah, I agree. Hmm. I think I think I think the tides will turn for them at some point. I just don't know what it is that they need to do to bring it forward. Like, they've got quite a few games on the service now. A bit. Uh, I read them probably like a couple of weeks ago. Forgot the majority of them, but when t when Mark was telling me about them, um, I was like, actually, that's that's a really good package that they've got there. They're, like they're 14 or 15 games that you're able to play if you've got the pro model uh, you're able to just go hop in and hop in and out of these games which is fantastic for someone who's a day one adopter and still uses it i mean this it's is this is this is google stadium made for casual players or is it made for the hardcore at the moment i'm leaning towards the casual players that are able to take their experiences wherever they go see i'm like if, I, i'm not sure you know i mean i think it's it's they're hoping it would be aimed at, at the casual players, um, but the only people that I know that do play it are the hardcore. Um, mm. It's it's the nerds. It's it's us. It's Mark and and Tom kind of thing. We're we're all invested in video games and go further and beyond what that anyone else does. So it's more like it's more like nerds with a casual lifestyle. <laughs> so it's, yeah. So it's 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 quite a niche in that sort of sense. Um, yeah. I mean. I think for me the biggest thing, whilst it's it's ninety pounds, that is definitely uh, something that's more approachable. That's still twenty percent of a PS Five, uh, or if Lockhart comes at three hundred ish quid, which I don't think it will, but people keep saying it. Um, if Lockhart comes at three hundred quid, then that's one third of a next gen console, uh, which might only be digital only, which is what that is. So yeah. I'm thinking, oh, it's it's a nice price cut, but. You need you need exclusives. You need something bespoke. You need that that experience that people can get. Um, whether that's exclusive titles or whether that's just an exclusive way of playing something that offers a USP. Jordan says in the chat, Microsoft X Cloud will literally wipe this off the planet. Uh, and that's the thing. I mean, anything that they do have as an exclusive, they're not fully utilizing yet. That that being able to play on the move and so on, they're not fully utilizing uh, that level of exclusivity. Um, and by the time they do, will XCloud be upon us? And I'm yawning. Uh, speaking of which, um, because we've name dropped XCloud, uh, I'll jump into our next article. Um, uh, and before I do so, good morning, Chucky Boy1234. Uh, I, I feel the need to uh, 
uh, call out the numbers every time. I mean, I could, <laughs> I could just stop at Chucky Boy, but I feel like I need to. I mean, he's got a VIP badge. He's, he's earned that one, two, three, and four. I mean, I mean, I feel like it needs sharing out. But anyway, good morning, Chucky. I'll read. Morning. Uh, um, so yeah, Jordan just mentioned xCloud. So Google Stadia, for those of you uh, that are just dropping in, the price has been cut by £30 or $30 or €30. Euros. So it's now $100 or £90. Well, less than that, $89.99 in the UK. So it's a nice, accessible price. Um, but elsewhere, Sharif Saeed for VG247 writes an article that says, Xbox Series X hardware will power xCloud servers next year. Uh, this is a report. So Microsoft is reportedly planning, uh, is already planning for Xbox One S hardware not to stick around too long in xCloud servers. According to The Verge's Tom Warren, Microsoft will make Xbox Series X the default baseline hardware spec for its streaming uh, service project xCloud. Uh, through, uh, though the service has only ever been available through limited tests, Xbox One S is currently the console powering those games. Uh, the jump from that to Xbox Series X would be massive, and it's going to happen in 2021, according to Warren. Uh, so this is uh, Tom Warren's tweets embedded. Uh, just making sure, yep, it doesn't look like they're embedded, so I will leave them out. So Microsoft is planning to upgrade Project X Cloud servers to Xbox Series X hardware in 2021. At launch, Project X Cloud will be powered uh, primarily by Xbox One S Blades. The tech journalist also revealed, uh, revealed that xCloud will launch sometime this year uh, using existing Xbox One S hardware. He reckons Microsoft will be bundling, bundling it with Xbox Game Pass in some way. Uh, the decision will not only allow xCloud to run next-gen games, it also means backwards compatible titles from Xbox's vast library will look and play their best. Taking a look at how Xbox Series X compares to Xbox One X should give you an idea about how big of a game this would be. I'm not going to click through to that article. Spoiler, it will be bigger. <laughs> it's a game. There we go. <laughs> Remember that one when we first got unveiled and it was it, it was an infinite scroller. Like they were just, uh, it was so many words. Yeah. So much nerdy words that we were just blowing our mind. It's like, how does this compare to the Xbox One X? Uh, you just pick something, pick anything, and I will say Xbox does it faster or quicker or stronger or, or whatever. Just just pick it, it'll be fine. Um, but yes, so now, um, that do, that's, that's quite a good way to frame the first article. So Xbox Series X hardware will power uh, xCloud servers next year. So xCloud, which for those of you that don't know, I'm sure most of you do, but xCloud is Microsoft's cloud gaming uh, system, is that the way to put it? Uh, their proposition, anyway. So that is Microsoft's rival to Stadia. Stadia has dropped its price to 90 quid. There is a, there is a nice in there in terms of you can get access to the Stadia, the controller, and all of the system for 90 quid. Jobs are good. And, but Microsoft's xCloud uh, system will not just be running whatever Stadia is running at the moment. They're saying it's, it's better than the current gen. They're saying it's, it's pretty much next gen stuff. Whereas Microsoft are saying, okay, well, I was is next gen it's going to be the xbox series x our top level machine that that runs at 4k like 120 fps or whatever it's on certain games and so on uh whether it runs on that through uh xcloud i mean obviously that's a lot of data to be taken through your bandwidth but i mean neither in or there um it will be fully beefed up so is is that 90 quid price cut is it as attractive when you realize that the opposition Will be launching next year with all of xbox backwards compatible games and all of their coming forward games too thoughts pip do you know what I, I, i'm going to give you 30 seconds to run through this article and find the sentence that stands out more the most to me uh nothing says golf that's the golf uh what's my second favorite thing to do can't see you last a bit Oh, it's definitely mm -hmm. no last bit. Uh, okay, third. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Put me on the spot now. Uh, okay, so as you was reading out, my my ears pricked up, even though I'm reading it myself. The decision will not only allow X but X Cloud to run next gen games, but it also means backward compatible titles from Xbox vast library will also look and play their best. Oh, I thought you were you were like something else because I just mentioned that to you. I thought you were about something else, but but yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's the thing, is like having backwards compatible from Xbox Library. Xbox have been doing this for two or three years. So Stadia has, a, I mean, it must be approaching six or seven games now on Stadia. Maybe maybe even eight games in total on Stadia now. now. It must be 
100 ish maybe possibly whereas you'll have probably more than a thousand i'd imagine to start with on xcloud so and like like you say mm -hmm. there they will look and play their best as well i mean you had issues playing stadia in the office trying to get them to look and play their best so <laughs> well the, the thing that excites me about this though is Obviously, Microsoft now have been running for nearly 20 years. Was it 2001 where they brought out Halo and the original Xbox? So if, if it can go back all the way to the original Xbox, and that opens up a massive market of games that we haven't seen since the original Xbox. And it also includes some of our favorites, including, but not limited to, Pro Evolution Soccer 5, Pro Evolution Soccer 4. <laughs> Pro Evolution Soccer 5. You so can you imagine that being highly up via this X Cloud? That would be dynamite. And you'd also be playing it through a HDMI cable as well, which are, I think we only had component cables back on the original Xbox, which were good for the time, and they probably do hold up a little bit now, but having it via HDMI and better graphics and better frame rates and everything else upscaled um, alongside that, that would be dynamite. Com as component cables, mate. It's all about the SCART lead, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely was uh, a SCART lead player uh, until I had my first HD TV in my own room because we had a HD TV, but it was always firmly in the front room. Yeah, and I yeah. think I got my first HD TV in my bedroom around 2008. So, yeah, I was definitely a SCART adopter until then. And I, I, I remember, like, falling out with my mum and, and stepdad when they went to buy a TV. And they, uh, like, we'd all spoken about like the TV and stuff. Like, oh, we'll think about getting this or whatever. And they were, and they went down and they bought a 1080p. Like, it was still like a big fat thing, not like a flat screen Samsung thing. Um, uh, and as they got down there, so I stayed at home while my mum and Stuart went down to Curry's or Comet or whatever it was to pick up this TV. And they came back with the TV. And I was like, the model number is slightly different. It's like, oh yeah, got there. And they said that the TV wasn't in stock. So um, they could do us the same TV, but with a hundred pounds off, and it just means it's not HD. And I was like, <laughs> "What the fuck?" <laughs> so, so they just bought a brand new TV that remained in the living room that wasn't HD. So I was like, "For fuck's sake!" Ah, <laughs> uh, what well, better times, some might say. But funnily enough, when I move house, I'm actually looking for like a small version of not not a 32 inch one because i will never fit that into into the room that'll be the office but just like a small 18 inch square crt tv to be able to play the likes of my playstation 2 on um natively because i've got a hdmi upscaler and i do love it but because it's not an expensive upscaler it does look the bigger the screen the more blurry it looks ah. and that's not great so when I play it on my monitor that I'm that I use on my PC, it looks perfect. A nice 22 inch monitor, it looks great. But I put it downstairs on the 48 inch or whatever it is, 47 inch. It doesn't look as good as it does on the smaller screens. So if I'm just gonna get a smaller screen and don't use a HDMI upscaler unless I'm streaming. So that's what I want to do. That's what I want. All my old like my, my Xbox, the original Xbox, my PlayStation 2, my PlayStation 1, all of those, just play it on one of them normal TVs, CRT ones. It just means that you have to have this absolute massive wedge of a box because the CRTV still got the, the back end of it. Oh, I'd, see, I'd be, I'd be like, oh, fuck it, let's just go 22 inch monitor. Jobs are good. Yeah. Um, Xbox Game Pass is included with XCloud, meaning you get all the Game Pass games included in the cloud. Uh, you can have it on iOS, Android, and PC, says Jordan. Uh, I was playing Skate 3 on XCloud, then straight into another game in three minutes. Nice. I see, I've got XCloud as well, I've got access to it on my phone. Um, I think we sort of spoke about this when it, there was Xbox Gate, there was sorry X Cloud, uh, GeForce Now, which we'd not heard anything for for the longest time, and then also um, Google Stadia. Those three were kind of battling it out for the for the title of streamable get video game passes. Um, but yeah, X Cloud works a treat on my phone. One second, keep, keep padding. Uh, uh, Jordan also says uh, all devs are not allowing GeForce Now to have all the games on there. That doesn't surprise me. GeForce Now, I would have thrown my hat in the ring to say that they would have been doing it <laughs> potentially the best out of all three. And it turns out they are actually doing it the worst out of all three because they were going behind the studio's backs um, to 
throw their games on their service without asking. They were the the, the publishers, uh, the devs allowed their games to be on this service for beta access only, and then launched without telling them that they're going to be launching with those titles, which is obviously a really really bad move to do when you're Dirt. bringing out a brand new console. So. So oh, as the days roll on, when it got released, uh, more and more and more of the devs were pulling their game. So it'll be a surprise what they're actually left with now. We haven't heard anything from GeForce now for a while. So I'm guessing they're just trying to build bridges <clears throat> with the, the developers and the publishers to try and get some games back on there. But if I was to throw my hat in the ring of any one of those, I would have said GeForce was probably going to do the best because they know how to look after stuff. It's not like Google are going into a market that they have absolutely nothing about. Yeah, yeah, they know how to look after stuff, and they know how to look after PC players. They know how to speak directly to them. So I thought um, having that as a top down, so starting out with the master race and then dropping down into uh, like picking off areas of the console market, I thought G GeForce Now might have been one that would have been able to do it. But yeah, starting so long, uh, starting so wrong by not getting permission and losing so many big games like Activision at, at first and I think the likes of Epic and Ubisoft or whatever are backed them which is which is nice to have big friends like that but like I said they're not doing that much uh, going forward all devs are not allowing GeForce now to have games on there yeah yeah uh, although just had this from David every time we speak about Google Stadia we should say and the next up in the news we have an article on Google Stadia Google Stadia ladies and gentlemen yeah <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> there, that's pretty much what Google City has been like. I mean, do you know what? Once again, I will. I will my ears. You're welcome. Uh, I will give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, uh, I'm happy enough to do that. They are adding more games. They are tweaking their offering. They're dropping their price. They're making it more approachable. But the main thing is the gaming system, uh, the gaming experience. And having it as a social thing, it's, hard, it's a hard, hard thing to break into that now. They've done such a bad job of the launch. They almost like a need, need a relaunch kind of thing. And maybe they'll do that. They'll maybe maybe have Stadia version 2. Mm. Uh, oh, uh, without that, it's going to be difficult. So, do you know what? Fair play to your Stadia. You, you are plugging in your way. GG Google for doing that. But your launch was so bad. It's going to take you a long time. I'm not sure you can yeah. do it. Do you know what I think could do well, though? This is a tedious thing, by the way. What I think could do well is, you know, maybe a, a new a new game from Guerrilla. Maybe a Horizon Zero Dawn sequel. Uh, oh, look, there we go. Guerrilla has detailed a Horizon 2 and confirmed a 2021 PS5 release. This was obviously f uh, featured in the uh, PlayStation 5 reveal event last Thursday. So a week ago today, we found Horizon Forbidden West is a thing. But this new video explores Forbidden West. The article is written by Andy Robinson for the VGC. And it says, Do you know, I've not actually seen this video, so I'll just hit play on it and then mute it. Oh, it's muted anyway. Um, so whilst I'm going through the article, so you've got a little bit of moving imagery. But according to Game Director... Actually, didn't read. No, didn't read the tagline. Guerrilla has released a new video which offers more details on Horizon 2, aka Forbidden West, and confirms a planned 2021 release for the PS5 title. According to game director Matthias de Jong, uh, who also directed the first Horizon, Forbidden West will feature a larger game world than its predecessor and virtually no loading screens thanks to the PS5's high bandwidth SSD. If you open up the map and fast travel from one end to the other, restarting from a checkpoint will be super fast, said De Jong. And when you boot up the game, uh, you're right there in the action. The sequel has protagonist Aloy exploring the new frontier, which stretches from, uh, from Utah in the USA all the way to the Pacific Ocean in the West. According to Guerrilla, players will explore deserts, valleys, and ruined cities full of iconic landmarks. For the sequel, we wanted to go wider and deeper, so the map is a bit bigger, to Young explained, but we also wanted players to be able to explore what lies hidden beneath the surface of lakes and rivers. The landscapes may be stunning, but danger lurks in every corner in the Forbidden West. The sequel fe will feature dozens of new machines as well as peaceful and hostile tribes. As, re as revealed in Horizon 2's debut trailer, one of these tribes has discovered the knowledge of how to override machines and use them in combat. 
A red blight is also infecting the lands of the Forbidden West, choking wildlife and starving tribes, while the weather has spiralled out of control. Aloy will have to go to great lengths in order to save this world, said De Jong. As the game is designed and built on mystery, we don't want to spoil all the surprises today. We've been working very hard in order to create a worthy sequel, one that will hopefully appeal to all the fans, but also newcomers to the franchise. VGC revealed that PlayStation was planning a trilogy of Horizon Zero Dawn games following the success of the 2017 original. Uh, so there you go. Any initial thoughts, Pip? I'll leave the trailer on screen for now. Yeah, I mean, it, when you have a successful game like this, you need to go bigger and better, and that's exactly what we're hopefully going to see tomorrow. I mean, all the news articles that we've seen from The Last of Us, and I mean, as Last of Us fans, we kind of know that it is going to be an absolute banger, but... Um, you need to go bigger and better, and that's exactly what Horizon's doing. I'm interested. I didn't actually know that there was planning this to be a trilogy. Um, I could that seems to have completely gone right by me. But but towards the bottom, it says plans for next gen sequel indicate gigantic scope and co op mode. That I mean, the co op mode will be absolutely boss. You're trying to take down all the monsters in the co op style, so you'd have someone that's trying to bait, bait the monsters, and then you're taking them down. That'll be amazing. But yeah, it's. It's hard to go bigger and better, so it's going to be interesting to see how this one holds up first before even talking about a trilogy. Because if this one doesn't do as well as the first one, i.e. the gameplay, the gameplay or the story isn't as good, then it's interesting to see what they're going to do for the third one. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be quite difficult for them um, to be able to make as good a good a game as the first one was. But I've got every confidence that they are going to be able to do that. Uh, I'm quite just because I've clicked through to that link to uh, scroll back through the article. Uh, we'll leave that one there though. But um, jump back to the original one. There we go. Yeah, well, I, mean, I mean, immersion in this game, immersion in any game on the play to Xbox is going to be part and parcel of the story. Like breaking immersion, going through to different levels, and like. I, I, reference playstation one resident evil the only way that they was able to stop to break the immersion was having the loading door screens so when you got to a door you open the door the door would swing open and then you'd be in the next room that was their loading screen that was genius for the time because it felt like you was not breaking the immersion you go to a door you have to go through the door therefore the door opens kind of keeps you immersed this having an ssd that can read data that fast that you don't even need loading screens will just keep you in the game for a little bit longer and that's that's what games need to aim for in the next generation just trying to keep you immersed in it for as long as you possibly can and that's what uh, the, the likes of spider-man and now this is saying there's going to be virtual no uh, virtually no loading screens that's their that's their sales pitch they're going to keep you immersed in the action for as long as they possibly can I'm yawning. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh, I'm tired this morning. Uh, Madge said it to me last night when we were playing um, uh, Mafia as well. I was like, tired, great. Cause just because I kept yawning then, and it's, it's still going now. So, yes. Um, speaking of Madge, good morning, he says. I should download this and play it sometime. Got it on sale again ages ago. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I I, Days Gone. What's that? I still need to play Days Gone. That game should have been right up my street, but I don't know why I didn't end up picking it up. I need to play. I've got so many that I need to play. Days Gone. I need to. Uh, I need to finish Spider Man. I need to finish Horizon. Um, I've started both Spider Man and Horizon uh, and God of War. I've started all three of those and haven't finished <laughs> any of those. Like games of, of the generation, uh, and I haven't played any. Anyway. Keeping you awake, are we? Yeah, absolutely. How rude! How rude! Uh, said like Jared Abbott's. How rude! Um, yeah. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I, I don't really know what to add here. It's kind of one of those ones where... Uh, we, we, I mean, the video may say more. I haven't seen the video, but... The, it's almost kind of the same script. It's almost kind of the Spider-Man script that's been rehashed. We will get fast loading. It will be much better. There's more to do. It will be bigger and so much more. Um, and it doesn't kind of give me any more excitement than seeing that initial reveal. So it, it is good to get a little bit more news. It's, it is good to find out that, uh, once again, the re uh, utterances that it's going to be a trilogy of games. Um, um, I just bought Days Gone on sale too. <laughs> Excuse me? A baking powder? Uh, but yeah, I mean, 
the comments like that, I always take with a little, well, quite a large pinch. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's nice, it's nice, but until I play it, I'll, I'll kind of right, hold off. But, I mean, looking at the video that we did have on screen, a lot of the footage within it was the same sort of footage that we had in in the uh, reveal event last week as well. Does that mean I'm, I'm excited for it? Uh, no, I'm not excited for it. No, absolutely not. I am excited for it. Um, we said before, I think it was like last Wednesday, we, were, we, we all kind of pinned Horizon 2 being the first party game. Um, mm. that would be in that conference. We've kind of said, obviously, Spider-Man because it's been shown before, but if we're looking at all, out of all of the games, we would expect a Horizon. And, it, and we got it, so yeah, I am, I'm definitely excited to play more of it. Um, but yeah, this... It's nice, it's nice, but give me a bit more. Speaking of get, getting a bit more, let's move ahead once again into speaking about new games as well. Did you know that Pokemon Snap is coming to the Nendo, uh, Nintendo Switch pick? Uh, I did. Yes, I seen this last night. Uh, did you ever play the original Pokemon Snap on the 64? I did on the 64. Yes, I did. I didn't own a copy. I played it at my friend's house. Uh, I haven't ever played Pokemon Snap. So before I jump into the article, give me a, give me a refresher. What is Pokemon Snap? So it was kind of like a jungle safari. So you used to go down on like a boat. Uh, and then there were Pokemon knocking about here, there and everywhere. And you'd literally just have to try and fill your photo album with taking pictures of Pokemon. Peeping Tom. Pretty much. <laughs> and in other news that's completely unrelated, Bibby is playing Stalker on the channel. Uh, <laughs> uh, Fantastic game. Fantastic game. <laughs> so this article written by Andrew Webster for the Verge says, Pokemon Snap is coming to the Nintendo Switch. A classic returns. It's finally happening. Popin uh, Pokemon? Pokemon. Pokemon even Snap. Uh, Pokemon Snap is making a comeback. The classic N64 game where players simply capture photos of pocket monsters is on its way to the Nintendo Switch. We don't know much about the new version yet, uh, aside from the fact that it's called Matter of Factly. New Pokemon Snap, though it's been developed by Bandai Namco. Uh, that's right, trainers. Pokemon Snap is back. New Pokemon Snap is an all-new adventure inspired by the classic Nintendo 64 game. Grab your camera and get ready to photograph Pokemon while exploring beautiful islands on Nintendo Switch. That is a... Uh, a tweet embedded from at Pokemon. Oh, with the trailer. Let's mute it. Uh, I'll leave that trailer playing there uh, whilst I uh, read the rest of the article. So here's the basic premise, courtesy of Nintendo. Travel to unknown islands with beautiful scenery like lush jungles and sandy beaches. The Pokemon pictures you take there will be used to build your very own Pokemon photo decks. This brand new game brings the gameplay of the 1999 Pokemon Snap game for the Nintendo 64 system to life on the Nintendo Switch system with unknown islands to discover and different Pokemon to see. Photograph lively wild Pokemon in their natural habitats as you research and explore unknown islands. Journey through a variety of environments such as beaches and jungles to capture previously unseen Pokemon behaviors. The photos you take can also be used to fill out your very own Pokemon photo decks. Uh, Vern, dropping a horse just as we're talking about Pokemon Snap. How are you doing, Vern? Yes, lad. Oh, I tweakle. Oh, I tweakle. Um, new Pokemon Snap doesn't currently have a release date. Uh, uh, sounds like a po uh, Pokemon peeping Tom. I choose you. <laughs> uh, roast me for all I'm worth, but Pokemon... <sighs> You're not a Pokemon, man. Uh, oh, Madge. Madge. Uh, wait, let me just, just give me a second. I'm just going to find out how to... Not ban, but just disapprove of... No, <laughs> there is no disapproval button. Okay, I'll leave you where you are then. Wow. Can you hear the birds? It's like full-on sea yes, I, I mean, I'm in Salford by the sea, clearly. Uh, uh, so, yes, anyway, for those of you just dropping in from Vern, uh, Vern stream, this is The Scoop. Um, we are Ice Cream Uploads. We're bringing you a, a daily dose of the news from the world of video games. We've gone through a few articles already. Uh, I'll give you a little... Bit of a catch up. Google Stadia has had, a, has its price cut to just ninety quid now, so it's cheap if you if you're interested in picking it up. Horizon Zero uh, Dawn Two, aka Horizon Forbidden West, has a confirmed release date of twenty twenty one, and the Xbox. Oh, actually, we missed that. I missed that one. Xbox Series X hardware will power X Cloud. So X Cloud, uh, Microsoft's online cloud service, will all be upgraded to Xbox Series X hardware very very soon. And this cycle that we're talking about now is Pokemon Snap is coming to the Nintendo Switch. What are your thoughts on that, babe? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, d I didn't think we'd be in a position to want a Pokemon Snap. I mean, this is coming from someone who's obviously played it before, but I didn't think there would be a need for Pokemon Snap, but it, this definitely isn't aimed at me anymore. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, I, I probably won't pick it up if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, it wasn't. It was. I mean, people, people are going to berate me for this, but it wasn't the best game originally. It was pretty <laughs> boring. Yeah. Like, can you imagine just got to go flying around on a boat or whatever scenery that you're going to be in to take pictures of Pokemon and fill your Pokedex? It wasn't the most exciting game to begin with. So it's interesting why people wanted it to come back so much. But I'm not the target audience, clearly. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree with that. It, it's definitely nice to have another Pokemon game. It kind of feels a little bit like it's there for the money. Um, Pokemon's just a, a money spinner. Bandai Namco have taken up an old IP, redone it just so they can earn a wedge of cash. Um, it didn't really have much substance to it before. It's not really for us. It's for a bunch of other people. Crazy Ivan, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome into the stream. How are you doing this morning? Um, but, I mean, I'm trying to think of the target audience. It's just it's just one of those where you just kind of like, you give it to the, the young youngins. So I know if I gave this to Chloe and said, oh look, Pokemon Snap, Chloe likes Pokemon. Uh, she'd be like, all right, so I'll just take a picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like though. I mean, the, the AR, uh, using the controllers and stuff, that might be a bit cool, but I think this is, I think this is probably like 15, 20 years too late. Yeah. To be honest. And you know when it comes out on the Switch as well, it's going to be 45 quid. So oh yeah, it's gonna be full price, mate. It's, it's like, got a Pokemon name next to it. It's like wow, yeah, okay. It's not for me. I mean, I'm 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 a, I'm into Pokemon. I'm a Pokemon fan. I was playing Pokemon Go this morning, obviously, uh, as always. Not interested in this whatsoever. Uh, any of you guys in the chat interested in Pokemon Snap? Well, it will be coming soon. No, no release date. Um, but uh, Tony Boy says, "Mine, mine, mine." Are we talking about Pokemon Snap? <laughs> yeah. Um, Good morning, Graham and Tiger Bibby Woods. Yes. Yeah. There yes, go. guys. What's going on, pal? Uh, Tito, good morning, says uh, Stadia will be canned by the end of the year. NVIDIA and xCloud have it beaten already. Yeah, we've already been speaking about GeForce now uh, and xCloud versus that. It was dead before it even got going. The thing is, it it, it kind of... I mean, it was from hindsight. I mean, it was, it was ass. But they had everything going for them. Like That, that announcement in like April, May last year caught everyone's attention as i said we pre-ordered one which we still have one in the office on the back of that going okay this is it's not going to be perfect no doubt but it's the future of video games the cloud everything going online i mean just seeing games go from physical discs to digital downloads and stuff is a huge step and that's happened over the last few years going to cloud gaming is going to be a big step going forward as well so we we're like yes all for this google we know google google do amazing things and they were talking like, it's going to be amazing. It's going to fucking kick ass. It's going to be fucking wonderful. You can marry it. It'll take you to fucking make you food in the morning. You're like, yes. And then in reality, it was just like a really, really poor proposition. It's like, okay, well, we have 60 frames. And it's like, what, per second? No, just in total. Uh, it depends yeah. on how many hours you play it for. You will get 60 frames. You might get a couple at the beginning. And then we'll give you a few more halfway through. And that's it. And it's like, fuck, it was such a bad experience. But so... Yeah, I wouldn't have said it was dead before it got going. It was, it was, it was such a good proposition, but only because it was overpromised. They overpromised on what they could deliver. So in that sense, it definitely was dead before they could get going. Um, Bandai Namco got all of those uh, sloppy cash cow releases. Cha Ching! Uh, Crazy Ivan says PUBG Mobile earned like two hundred million in opening month, mostly kids. Never underestimate the power of kids' money. Oh no, no, completely. We're not saying. Um, Pokemon Snap is is a um, is a bad release. Uh, it's fr from our perspective, it's 22, uh, 20 years too late. But we've already said we're we're not um, the target audience for it. I mean, there's so many other games as well. I mean, I mean, look at Fortnite. That's that's a game for kids. Uh, it's not. It's a game for everyone. But from a battle royale perspective, it's a game for kids, and and that's just completely funded uh, a system that's allowed everyone to get Grand Theft Auto for free, so it's it's massive. The, the kid market is definitely a huge, huge, huge market. Um, yeah, that's what I was saying before. We're definitely not the target audience for this. I was at the time when it came out. When did it come out? I'm going to say like 98 maybe. Pokemon Snap. Uh, it came out in 99, so I was eight years old when this came out originally, and I thought it was a good game. However, as a 29-year-old... 20 years later, I probably won't be picking this one up. I just I just don't think it's going to have much to it. Um, as I said, I think using the controllers to take the picture, like using your controllers like this, would be great. But 
that's about as good as it'll get. I'm definitely not the target audience for this, and that's not to say that it's not going to sell. It's got Pokemon in the name. It is going to sell. It's got Pokemon in the game. It's going to sell. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'm de- the target audience 20 years later for this one. Yeah, I'd agree with the same same sentiment there. Um, Pokemon, the brand is, is a cash cow. That is true. Mad says, Pokemon Snap sounds like a title to bundle for free to shift switch bundles. I, I think I can see that as well. Um, I, it's probably going to be put alongside Super Mario Kart 8 Deluxe because, you know, they have to keep peddling that one because everyone has to have it six times. Uh, Tito says, speaking about Stadia, the business model was bad. Everyone thought it was Netflix of gaming. That could have worked. Paying full price for each game. Nah. Yeah, exactly. Subscription service. Mm -hmm. Microsoft have already been smashing that with Game Pass. And they're bringing, uh, what was it John said? If you get xCloud, you get Game Pass within anyway. So you get access to all of that. So Microsoft are doing the Netflix of gaming. Google had the opportunity to be the first to do that and just completely dropped the ball. Chasing that paper. That's what it was. (laughs) Um... Uh, maybe five. Uh, uh, think ninety percent of households don't support internet for cloud gaming, uh, so that will have to be on hold for ten years probably. Maybe five G will speed it up. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. In- infrastructure isn't quite there for cloud gaming. Not 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 fully. I mean it is probably for quite a large amount of people, but not entirely across the board. And those that do have infra- infrastructure for cloud gaming, um, don't necessarily have it perfect. You still have to plug in probably uh to get the best uh, output of the game and you still might get like shit at peak times and so on so yeah uh better infrastructure give it give it 10 more years and we'll probably probably be in a point a point where cloud gaming is i mean probably not even 10 years to, to the point where we're we're getting it but t- 10 years when it's at the point of saturation imagine pairs on cloud gaming <laughs> no comment no comment uh I think only major cities and bigger countries have it, but rest nothing of that sort for now. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, I'm I'm on the edge of Manchester city centre, um, and I I can I, yeah I I wouldn't say that I have enough. Well, I don't have enough. My internet connection, my I'm about ninety meg at the best, eighty meg, something like that. Um, so whilst that's more than enough to do quite a lot of things it's not always that and when you're playing it on wi-fi you lose about 60 percent uh, 60 meg so you drop down to about 30 to 40 meg ish kind of stuff uh, which then if that's your network's been used and all that yeah it's not necessarily not it's not necessarily perfect for especially if you want 4k cloud gaming too uh, but anyway, a quick reminder, Pokemon Snap is coming to the Nintendo Switch. And we have one more news article today, which Bibby has put in. And I mean, I'm wearing a PUBG t-shirt and a PUBG hat, so you clearly would think I've put this article in. But, you know, I'm going to make a lot of you that aren't interested in PUBG go to sleep. As the next bit of news says, PUBG's latest patch adds C4 and makes vehicles a little safer. Uh, and the patch even brings some improvements to the update of the candy, written by Austin Goslin for Polygon. The article says... Player, unknown, uh, player Unknown's Battlegrounds has a brand new weapon and it's sure to cause a bang. The, the game's latest patch adds C4 to the game but also makes vehicle a little safer along with a few improvements to the new version of the Kendi. PUBG's new C4... Oh, I'm just getting rid of Pokemon Snap. Title off the screen. People will be like, what? C4 in Pokemon Snap? Excuse me. PUBG's new C4 is a throwable weapon that explodes after 16 seconds. Unlike C4 in other games, PUBG's can't be activated early, so you're making a rather large bet every time you throw it. C4 even lets players get a little tricky since it can stick to almost any surface, including vehicles, so you can set 16 uh, second traps that other players may not expect. Speaking of vehicles, they now take damage differently. You can do, uh, you can now do more or less depending uh, damage depending on where you shoot most of PUBG's land vehicles. For instance, if you shoot a car or jeep near its engine, you'll do 100% of bullet damage, destroying the car quickly. But if all of your shots hit the roof of the car, you'll only do 50% damage, so uh, taking it out will require many more bullets. Cars also no uh, no longer explode instantly uh, when they hit zero health. Instead, the engine will shut off and catch fire at zero health, then explode a couple of seconds later, giving players just enough time to get to a safe uh, distance if they're quick. The one exception to this rule is if the car is destroyed by an explosion from something like the Red Zone or even the game's new C4. Finally, patch 7.3 is bringing a few updates to the Kendi itself. The map now has another train line, which will take players through the interior of the island, in addition to the original train line that ran along the island side of the map. The patch also increased the number of DRMs that spawn on Vikende. Uh, DRMs? 
and added a few more pieces of natural cover in areas that were too uh, that were a little too open. PUBG Patch 7.3 is now available on PC and is scheduled to be released on consoles on June the 23rd. You can find the full patch notes below. Uh, let's not go through all the full, full patch notes. There's a number of DRMs. I think they mean DMRs, but there we go. Uh, I was like, what? Because there's a BDRM, which is like an amphibious vehicle, but a DMR is basically a sniper rifle. Um, uh, Gaz J says, I was also shocked the Apple uh, that Apple didn't get in the games market after seeing Stadia. Uh, we know why they didn't do it. I can only buy... Uh, I can only... Uh, buy 50 down, but it's 35, and 5 up, just because there is no infrastructure. 5 kilometers away, you can have 100 for 100. That's, that's kind of the same for me, but, but, but different numbers. So I can get... Um, like 80, 90 down, but literally my mate who's who's not even five kilometers away, he's got um, like Virgin Media 300 down or whatever and so on. So I can I can get more from very close, but I've got fiber to the cabinet rather than fiber to the home. So I have fiber, which is decent, but not not full on uh, fiber speeds. Uh, C4 PUBG meets COD. That's kind of it, kind of it. Uh, as a fan, uh, is this game just as fun as it was first time around? Uh, uh, Graham uh, never played it. No interest, but curious. Uh, genuinely, yes. Um, I, I mean, I like the idea of battle royale in general. I'm, I'm open to playing Fortnite. I'm open to playing Warzone. I'm open to playing COD and so on. Um, so, yeah, I'm open to all battle royales. I think they all offer different things. The, th the, the kind of the, the thing that PUBG gives me is the ability to play it differently. Um, because you can you can get killed and you can kill people so easily and so quickly as you'd expect in real life. You get hit with a bullet, you're fucked up. Um, mm. So it's that realism, but that's what makes it frustrating as well. Because you could you could play it for hour, not hours, but for twenty five minutes, you could loot it to the tits, get into the final circle, and one bullet could end your game, and that could be it. But things like this C four, I was watching some streamers the other day, and they were like parked up at the top of a hill. They stuck the C4 to their own cars and once you stick it the 16 second timer starts counting so then they started like driving down this hill towards this compound where these these um, other people were holed up inside but C4 has like big blast damage so even if you're on the other side of a wall C4 hurts you so they're basically set off on a death run not for them but for the other people in vehicles kind of crashed into this compound jumping out of the vehicles when it was just slow enough for them to take some damage but not die so these vehicles were like rolling bombs rolled straight into this compound and then boom people were blown up to shit so so yeah um i i do think it's really good i do think it's frustrating as hell and it's it's frustrating partially because of the game grew exponentially so fast it, it came from a developer that hadn't had experience working on a game of that size um and you can tell with things like just movement getting stuck on little nubbins uh how, how does how does dr disrespect refer to this this is a game bib what does what does uh dr. Is it, unathletic? <laughs> it is that's the one this fucking unathletic game and that's it is unathletic in that sort of sense i mean some some of it's really good if you're running around on an open field or whatever and or or a flat plane it's fine not, nothing wrong there you soon as you've got like any sort of like rock face or something that has bumps and stuff you play call of duty your guys instantly stepping up things and moving pow 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 because call of duty realizes you're not asked about whether you're on a perfectly flat bit or there's a pebble there you're not bothered about that you're in the middle of a fight and that's where the immersion is whereas pubg didn't consider that from the beginning so you'll find like you'll hit like little nubbins that you can't get over and then sometimes you're like you try jump it and it, your ankles catch on it and 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 then you eventually kind of like do some sort of like vault animation but when you vault you put your gun away and and you, uh, long story short you can get fucking melted by shit like that so it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination it's just mm. the just how difficult and how immersive it can be is what kind of gives you the reward when you get to the final circle that level of stress if you win it is there's more of a hype winning in pubg than there is in any other and i think that's why i like it so much uh tito says pubg is good but so unforgiving i played it for over a year and i was still terrible at it uh not used to skill gaps in gaming now <laughs> too much better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah i mean i i'm i'm reasonable at it i'm not i'm not wonderful i'm reasonable i'm decent enough i can hold my own um uh i i won on my last game yesterday so yeah ta -da! um 
with seven kills. But seven kills for, for a lot of people is nothing. Seven kills is a decent number of kills for me, uh, and that's kind of where my level is. But but that's the thing. You can you can win it with just one kill as you can with any BR, which is which is why I kind of like battle royales. You, you might get into a final circle that's got three people in, and they're absolute fucking legends. But you might get into the final circle that's got one person in it and is an absolute potato. Um, and even then, he might just kind of like close his eyes, pull the trigger, and just absolutely hit you with a banger of a headshot and win. And you're like, fuck. Uh, sound like uh, sounds like the experience of playing Viet Cong on PC. If anyone remembers that, I don't remember that. Remember that? You do. I don't. Uh, let me check. I don't it. Viet Cong video game. Let's have a look. Let's bring this on screen. Old games in 4K. <laughs> Viet Cong. Uh, let's, let's skip through. Skip through. Oh, it does look old. <laughs> wow. This looks like PUBG when it first launched. It's got a mini 14 in his hands. That's what it looks like anyway. It's a PUBG weapon. Wow, how old is this? Oh, 2003. Oof, that's why. Do you know what? For a 2003 game, it's, it doesn't actually look too bad. They're rough. I mean, it, it does look rough in general from today's standards, but yeah. Uh, Viet... yeah I'd, I'd still easily play that. I mean, I've seen you play games with, surprise. with much less polygons than that, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the moment, I don't know if anybody else in the chat's played it, but I'm playing Stalker uh, Shadows of Chernobyl. Fantastic game, and it pretty much looks and plays like what um, Escape from Tarkov is like. Like if anyone's played that, like you're just going out, you're salvaging shit. <clears throat> you have a full, like fully stocked inventory and things like that that you need to keep on uh, topping up, looking after yourself by drinking and eating and things like that. It's extremely difficult if you die because it plays like a survival horror at the same time. So if you die, it, that's it, game over. You have to go back to your old save state. Um, which, if you don't save, because it doesn't auto save, is a pain in the ass. Uh, Brilliant. Yeah, but are you going to be playing that on the channel anytime soon, babe? Uh, well, if you go down to the schedule below, you'll find out that I'm actually streaming this on uh, Friday at half past seven. Uh, you're streaming it when, did you say? Uh, Friday at half past seven. And how could people find out when you're streaming it again? Uh, you could go over to Twitter. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah, uh, you can go over and follow us on social medias. Yeah. Uh, is it, is it really? Where's my socials? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not there. I found it if you can hear me because of the RTX. Oh, I, can't, I can now, but I couldn't before. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I'm whispering to absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, Bibi has RTX voice, uh, which is really good for killing out background noise. Um, but it means that if your whisper's too quiet, you can't hear it. So you just see him going. <laughs> <laughs> like a really badly dubbed film. <laughs> um, Viet Cong was a good game. I like that. Like the weapons. Uh, I've, ne I've literally never heard of this before. Um, I haven't. It's got a lot of the same weapons as PUBG, which doesn't surprise me, to be fair, because PUBG started out as a passion project for Brendan Green, and he will have taken inspiration from all of these sort of games from this uh, era. So it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, Stalker is an FPS classic, says Asim. Uh, yeah, it's a banger of a game. There's like three of them in a trilogy as well, and I was going to try and get through all of them, but I'm about six hours into the first one at the moment, and I, this game just feels incompletable. <laughs> uh, the Metro series is kind of like a spiritual follow-up to Stalker. Pretty sure some of the dev team worked on it too. The latest Metro is Ace, actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've, we've worked on... Um, not the first one, uh, but we worked on... Um, is it Last Light and uh, Exodus and, and, and so on? So we, we've done um, some stuff with Metro. And yeah, uh, that that is a fucking amazing game in terms of immersion and the way it looks. If you, mm -hmm. I remember when we first started working on Metro Last Light. So this is seven years ago, something like that. Um, and seeing that like fully maxed out on marks like pretty much jet engine rig uh a jet pilot rig should i say like i mean it's kind of like mine three screen setup but fully fully maxed out resolution everything across three screens just looked absolutely phenomenal um Viet Cong was an under the radar game probably due to the theme it has uh Viet Cong plus add-ons quality well that's that's basically what, did you did you mention the add-ons and stuff babe 
Me? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what. To the, uh, oh, uh, oh, actually, um, I'm talking stalker there. Uh, uh, thought would come say hi while Bateson has his lunch. Uh, is he on? Is he on screen having his lunch? If he is, uh, give him a message. <laughs> um, but yeah, Bibby is playing Stalker, which is an old game. But Bibby is playing that with a bunch of add-ons. Did you mean when you say add-ons? Ah, uh, uh, okay, yeah. So I, I know what you mean now. <clears throat> I uh, originally installed Stalker on my PC about a year ago when I started playing it, and I had a load of mods on it, so it brings it up to like playing in 2020. <clears throat> However, the mod included the game to be so fucking difficult that I could not play it. Like I'd go, I'd leave the camp and go to the next part. And I'd just be, it's like one shot kill. And I, I'm good. I, I think I'm good at FPS games. This game will ruin your life. It's like playing any game that you've ever played before on extremely hard mode. So one bullet, one kill. And I couldn't get past the first bit. Like I, there's a, there's like a military camp right in the center and you have to pass the next, you have to pass that to get through to the next part. But if you don't have, you can't run around with your gun holster uh, in your hand because people just think you're a target. So you have to take your gun out of your hand and have these things called bolts, which is just like little bits of wood. So you look, so you're not hostile. So you go up to them and you pay the money to get through, but they don't accept that even when you're playing on this difficulty. Um, so it doesn't matter if you have your gun out or you have nothing out. Uh, you're just going to get shot to shit. And I couldn't get past that bit. So I got rid of the mods and the game still looks great without any of the mods on just the vanilla version of the game. And now I'm so much further than I would have been if I kept the mods. <laughs> so I'm playing it. I'm playing it on normal difficulty now just to be able to give me a chance because it's it's just too hard. It's it's like if it, it felt like a proper sim of a game and I don't want to do that when I'm playing a first person shooter <laughs> game. I don't want it to be a sim. So I was just getting my ass handed to me. So all the mods are gone. It's still I'm playing it at uh, 1080p and it looks it looks good for a game that was came out in 2008. Yeah, I'm so, I, yeah. I'm kind of kind of with you on that. I think that's kind of why I like PUBG because you've got some elements of it being a sim, um, but it's still just an arcade sort of like video game. Because uh, because you put PUBG next to uh, Battlefield. And PUBG has so much more intricacies in terms of attachments and in terms of leading shots and all that sort of shit. But then you put PUBG next to Tarkov and PUBG just looks like it's a basic game because Tarkov is so, so in-depth. And that's too yeah. pro probably for me in terms of a long-term game. I'd probably enjoy playing Tarkov. Um, I, I don't mind watching it. I'd probably enjoy playing it to a point and then I'd probably think, ah, oh, it's just... Just getting it's just a bit too much now. Just like a lot of people probably think PUBG is too much for them, uh, but yeah, uh, it's, it, that's where my sort of threshold is between more towards sim and uh, more to mm -hmm. yeah a bit more towards sim, but not not fully. Um, Viet Cong's looks like it could be related to Battlefield Vietnam. It does, to be fair. Actually, speaking of Viet Cong, uh, I, I, I I have to put this back on on screen as well. Um, that Alicia Kong, uh, Alicia Key song. Uh, this girl is on fire. Uh, I was watching this video as, as Bibby was still talking through because I'd had it played in the background. I didn't realise it wasn't on, on screen. Anyway, this bit, I'll, I had, Alicia Keys came into my mind. This man is on fire! <laughs> just stood there, just, dude, just on fire, like, just shacking out. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, Crazy Ivan says, uh, my nostalgia never lets me sit, play. Um, is that meant to say play? Never let me say any FPS is better. Oh, my nostalgia never lets me to say any FPS is better than single player, multiplayer, COD 2. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always been a Battlefield guy, um, but the, the it, COD 2 was in Modern Warfare 2, or COD 2 was in the one that was on the PS2 called the Big Red One. I think he's. I think he's meaning COD 2. I would. I would. I would always go Modern, MW2 for Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. How, however, I would say um, the old one. Okay, I, I would say FPS. My peak is. Um, torn between Battlefield Bad Company 2 and um, Modern Warfare 2. Two completely different games, um, but the right sort of themes and good sort of balancing and, and stuff. So somewhere sort of that way. I'd probably lean towards Bad Company 2 because of the team play and it not just being one solo run and gun, gun fest kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I just don't know which. I, I've ne I don't think I've ever played Call of Duty 2 then. Because I've always played the the one that I've got, and I think, I'm sure I've got it in my collection here. It was Call of Duty 2, the big red one. But it looks like there's two different versions. There's Call of Duty 2, and then Call of Duty 2, the big red one. I don't know if that, I've, I've just played the expansion or the original game. What the fuck? I didn't know that. Um, 
Ivan says, back then, a single player was still a good thing. It had that enemy at the gates vibe. See, I, I, I can't remember. Maybe I, maybe I didn't finish any sort of single player um, campaigns. I mean, I definitely had a few that we started playing. I might not have finished them or they might not have resonated uh, with me. Like I said, the, the first one that resonated with me, as did with most... Uh, a lot of other people, not most of the people, that's very generalising. A lot of other people was uh, COD 4. Obviously, that, that sort of having different modes, like using... I mean, it's cliche now. You always have to have, like, a, a mission where you go into a gunship. But that AC-130 mission, and then having that, like, slow-mo, sort of, like, pull the gun when you're down kind of bit, all of that stuff was kind of immersion for me. It's, it's overdone to the tits now. You always It's not an AC-130. This time it's an AC-131. <laughs> it's an AC-132. Yeah. Uh, these are even things, but we're just making it up to make it different for every new game. And that's, uh, yeah. But before that, I don't think, I, I don't know if I played a story that caught my attention enough to make me, uh, um, to make me continue playing through it. P p I definitely, I, I, as I've said many times, Modern Warfare catches my attention historical warfare doesn't so if it was an old school sort of like a world war one world war two ish sort of thing then i'd, I'd have it'd lost my attention i wouldn't continue playing through it mm. anyway um cod 4 was market breaker back then it was absolutely that's what that's what set the world on fire um i mean obviously a lot of that was based off of the multiplayer but but the single player story was really good as well uh cod 2 opened the market and broke um, and broke medal of honor and cod 4 just skyrocketed yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um but anyway, anyway, let's wrap things up. Uh, we're an hour and 30 minutes into it. Wow, a minute ago, there was like, I think, oh, we might finish this one in under an hour again. And then a minute later, it's like 13 minutes past the hour. I was like, damn. But anyway, final bit of news for today is that PUBG Update 7.3 is out on PC and comes to consoles next week. So you can check that out for yourselves on PC right now, or you can check it out on console next week, or you could just check it out by watching us live here next week, because every Tuesday and Thursday, myself, uh, and, and most of the time, Jordan, I don't know if he's in the chat, we've not had him in the chat for a little while, he was in at the start of the stream, but we uh, have been playing a lot of uh, PUBG duos on stream, so no doubt you will see it when we play it next week. Anyway, speaking of PUBG, there's a reason why I'm wearing the hat and the t-shirt, and there's a reason why Bibby put the article in the agenda for the end of the scoop, and that's so that we can have the cheesy tie-in to say, we're going to go offline now from the scoop, but we're going to jump straight back on with some more PUBG from the pub in the pub with G. Uh, so if you want to stick around, you want to get involved in some PUBG content, then feel free to do that. We will we'll wrap the stream up. I'll go offline and we'll come straight back on pretty much almost instantly uh, so we can jump into the pub. So feel free to stick around for that. But if you're not here for the PUBG stuff and you just want some more video game news, then the scoop returns at 10 a.m. ish tomorrow morning. 10 a.m. ish tomorrow morning. Um... Uh, we should have some good news as well because EA Play Live takes place at midnight tonight UK time. That is right, isn't it? It is right. Twelve. Uh, tw yeah, it's uh, it's midnight tonight. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. midnight to uh, or I don't know. Is it? It's midnight tonight. Just say that <laughs> it's midnight tonight <laughs> on Thursday when we get up in the morning. Is is it? Is this the one that's twenty four hours? Um. Yes. So so no doubt they'll start with something big and then they'll probably save stuff. Uh, across. Uh, uh, see you tomorrow, lad, says Ivan. 12 a.m. they open the stream. Uh, Jordan says it starts at 8. Yeah, this is this is bizarre because, uh, yes, Midnight UK says Magic Man as well. Yeah, because I, like, we've seen, we even had an article that we had up on screen yesterday that started at 12 a.m. Uh, BST on Friday. Um, so basically 12 midnight tonight slash tomorrow morning, whatever you want to call it. Um, and Eisen says, on YouTube, EA open the stream, it says 12 a.m. Okay, well, if you find different, then you can keep that to yourself. We will stick with 12 a.m. Just, uh, just for a nice ease of signing off. But yeah, 12 midnight tonight, 12 a.m. If you're still up, then make sure you check out EA Play, because no doubt they will start with something big. And then, then they might have a few hours off, if it does last for 24 hours, um, because you... You've got a feel if the if it's only if it's only a couple of hours, all the big messaging is there. If it's spread out over twenty four hours, they'll have the big messaging at times that cross time zones. So if it's not going to be then, it will probably be more like um, the early evening tomorrow. But we will see. Mm. Whatever has come out before ten a.m. tomorrow, we will have on on the scoop anyway. But before we do disappear, and before before we start setting up for PUBG, and before you guys get all your snacks and stuff ready for EA Play Live, Bib. Is there anything you would like to add before we go off air? Yes, of course. If you do see any video games knocking around the social media platform of your choice, then do feel free to get in contact with us. You could do that by doing two 
different things. First one, following us on our social media platforms, which is at, we, uh, at We've Got Vino, at Graham underscore Day, and of course, at Ice Cream Uploads. The second way that you can do that is by dropping into our Discord link. There is a bit on the left-hand side that says the Scoop News. All you need to do, drop your thoughts and impressions and the link, obviously, because we need to include it into our news articles in the morning. Um, but yeah, drop your thoughts and opinions. We'll take our thoughts and opinions and give you that in the very next show, which is at what time tomorrow, Mr. Graham Day? 10 a.m. Ish, ish, ish. So at 10 a.m. ish, tomorrow we'll be back with the scoop. As I said, we are going to jump into some PUBG now, though, as you can tell from the map. So feel free to linger in the channel. If you've got nothing better to do, I'll stick up the hold slate. I'll get the green screen ready. Uh, then we'll go offline, but come straight back on with more PUBG. So if you're sticking around, I will see you then. And if not, we will see you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. ish, for the next episode of the scoop. Until then, stay frosty. Maybe you have to whisper loud from that because we've got RTX, we can't hear it. Hey, brother.